Okay. <laughs> So this is kind of a weird video, <laughs> but this is a redemption video. I put out a video this morning at oh dark 30 about a paper bowl that I made. And then someone made a comment, Shannon Green, about that after watching, <laughs> watching the video with the bowl and, oh my word, how many, <laughs> I just, I don't know how to describe it. Anyway, so the comment was, she wanted to see socks, <laughs> so here's my sock video. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go through all my socks. <laughs> see, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> all right, so um, I have tons of socks. Now, some of them need to be darned, you know, fixed because they have holes in them, but I'm going to show them to you anyway. This, my friends, is the very first pair of socks I ever knit. Wow, there's too much light in here. Um, let me go close the blinds. Well, I don't think it made much difference, but here we go. So, this is the very first pair of socks I ever knit, which was, again, a colossal mistake. <laughs> the socks are wonderful. But the mistake was the choice in colors uh, for a very first pair of socks should not have been a dark green. Knitting with very dark colors and black is really hard because if you ever lose a stitch, you will never see it. I mean, it, it will just run like a stocking, like, like pantyhose used to when we wore them. So there's the very first pair I ever knit. And I still have them, and they're... Um, I think I knit them in... 2000 and I want to say somewhere before 2010. So yes, they've been babied and they've been well loved and worn. And I think, is this the pair I darned? I'm looking to see if they're getting a little thin right past the heel. Oh, yeah, look. Needs to be darned. There's a hole in the toe. On the bottom of the toe. I'm really tough on... Um, the heel parts. I think one of these pairs of socks, I darned them. Maybe not this pair. Okay, so that's pair number one. And the rest of these are in no order. They're just whatever I pull off the pile. This is the same um, sock pattern, different yarn, as this pair because this was called, this was my friend who owned a, um, a, a, a knitting store, a yarn store in Virginia Beach. And I told her I wanted to learn how to knit socks, so she made me knit a hat. <laughs> So she said, you need to learn how to use double point needles because they were all the rage then. Um, and you need to learn how to manipulate needles in your hand four and five at a time that are double pointed. And um, a hat is the best way to show you how to do that. This is too hard for the first time. I was like, okay, okay. So I knit the hat. And 10 minutes after I knit the hat, I was raring to go for my first pair of socks. So this is her pattern. I have more than a few pair of socks that are done in the exact same pattern with different yarns because I really like the pattern because it was super duper easy to knit. Here's another pair. Here's another pair in that same pattern. I think I've knit probably six or eight pairs of socks in that same pattern because it is just a great pattern and it fits my feet really well. Here's another one. These, um, some of these are different combinations of wool and cotton. These are um, heavy in cotton, not so much wool. And I'm not crazy about cotton socks because honestly I don't think they stay up very well, but they look cool and they seem to not wear holes. Oh, I'm lying. Here's a hole right there. You see the hole? Yeah. So um, you put reinforcement yarn on them, which means you hold a smaller, thinner thread in your hand with the original yarn you're knitting with to do what this is called um, a heel flap. And then um, this is called a gusset where you narrow this down so that you can finish the foot. I tend to wear out my socks more in this section. And this is getting a little thin here too, right here, because the um, 
there's the part of the heel because the uh, thread you uh, the second thread reinforcement thread you stop doing at a certain point well <laughs> evidently <laughs> My foot knows this and wears a hole right in the place where the reinforcement stops. And on my toes, the same thing. You reinforce your toes because they think that people are really tough there. No, it's right, <laughs> right after the reinforcement yarn stops. So, so, you know, doesn't work for me. Alrighty, so there's this pattern. This, I think this is called her simple sock pattern. Her name is Sue. And so I made lots of socks... Let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five. Mm, there might be another pair in here at five. Here's number six. Because I like this pattern, it fits my foot well. Six pairs. Uh, number seven. Is this number seven? No, that's not the same pattern. There's more in here that have that same pattern. Oh, here we go. This is number seven in that particular um, pattern. I really like this pattern. The thing is, is that I wear, like I said, I wear my socks out. Look, look at this one. That's a big hole. I have to. I have a pile. I got these out of the darn pile, so I mixed in good socks with darning socks so I'll have to go through them again so I know which ones go back in the to be darned pile all right so let's see here's a pair of purple socks that are just I just put the red on them because I just thought it would look cool with purple all these socks were the majority of these socks that I'm showing now were knit bef around 2010 2011 and I store them in a drawer that has cedar in it. It's a cedar lined drawer because wool moths in Texas are, uh, they have a ferocious appetite to eat your wool. Um, and when you see little things flying out of your drawer, <laughs> you know you're in deep, deep trouble. So I try to avoid that by putting sachets of lavender or buying little bags of um, cedar. They look like cedar cubes, or you buy round ones. It doesn't matter the shape. It's the fact that it's got cedar. It warts off the um, the wool moss, and they will cost you a fortune by chewing up your stuff. So that is just, this is just plain knitting. There's no fancy anythings here. The only thing that's fancy about this is the fact that I just put red heels and red toes on it just for grins and giggles. All right, so... I got brave and decided to do lace socks. I think these are called spring forward. It's You can see lace a lot easier in solid colors. These are really easy. They look complicated, but they're super duper easy to knit. Otherwise, you know, like my other stuff, I would not knit them if they weren't. Again, with the heel flap and the gusset. These I have not worn through yet. So I did... Um, these in this pattern right here because I really I really liked it. I've only done one pair in this specific um, lace pattern, but I'm planning on doing another one in a so another solid color because I like these. They are a little big, so I will have to go down in a needle size to tighten them up a little bit. But otherwise, this is a really nice pattern. Okay, then I have these. I call these my pumpkin socks. I can't remember what pattern this is. But it has texture in it. And a lot of these are self-striping yarns where they dye them to make them stripe. And then you get whatever you get. And they're not matched at all. But it's okay. I don't really care. They're in my shoes. And I have long pants over them. Who's going to see them? I wear them purely for my delight. But I like these. I like the, the earth tone colors and I like the pattern. It's a very simple pattern. And they fit really well. All right, so another lacy sort of looking pattern. I think these are called tadpoles. I can't remember. Let me turn around. There you go. These are another pattern. Super duper easy to make. Um, this does not have a heel flap on it. This is another kind of um, heel on it. Oh, well, it does have a heel flap, but it's not reinforced. So that's that pair right there. 
like I said, I think these are called tadpoles. And then, uh, which is kind of a lacy thing. And see, you get, you start to develop problems like this, that, like threads coming out everywhere if you're not paying attention. And these. This is a self-striping yarn. Oh, and this, this is tadpoles or something like that. I don't know. I don't remember. Where the pattern is um, only on the front part of the sock where you see it. Well, who wants to put a pattern on the back? You never see it. But when you take your shoes off and you wear socks around the house, when you're looking down at your toes, you see that lovely pattern there. Again, easy pattern to, to knit. Uh, this one... I think this is called Tidal Wave. Where's the other one? These are called Tidal Wave socks. And I, I like these socks. I just got done knitting this same pattern in a new yarn. I'll show it there. See? You've got these little things here, and then you've got the little holes that separate them all, the yarn overs. And it goes all the way around the leg but on the foot, it's just plain stockinette, which is just knitting around and around and around and around. So I really like this pattern. So much so that I did another brown pair in this pattern of, this is, I don't know if this is hand-painted yarn or if this, I can't remember all these yarns. I have them in my Ravelry page. Here's another one that's just the same pattern as this one. And I reinforced the heel and it's pilling and I reinforce the toe further up the foot to avoid that hole that usually starts like right there so I reinforced it like halfway up the foot and then of course <laughs> I wore a hole right there <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished <laughs> alright so um, is this a get uh, there we go There's the one where you have the pattern up the front, nothing in the back. I love these socks, and I love this pattern. Can you tell? This is the same one as this. And another pair. Once you find a pattern and a um, needle size and yarns that you're comfortable with, you tend to knit that same style over and over. And I'm not the only one who does it. So, All right, so these are my pumpkin socks, and I cannot tell you what pattern it is, but Lord have mercy, these are orange, and I only wear these in October because I, I don't particularly like these. I, um, I don't know. I'm not crazy about how much orange there is. <laughs> when I saw the ball, it did not look like this, you know, when it's all in a skein or a ball or whatever. It does not look like what you think it's going to. So, I, um, I, I have another ball of this that I probably will end up selling or knitting for somebody else who likes this kind of stuff because uh, I'm not crazy about it. Okay, here's another pair. Again, with that same. And this is a new pair. Now, this, this well, yeah, this pair set on the needles for 10 years. <laughs> yep, you heard me right. 10 years. I had one sock finished and I looked in my project bag and the only thing I needed, loose thread, the only thing I needed to do to this one was finish off like this part of the sock to finish the whole pair and I let it sit there in the bag for 10 years. I looked on Ravelry to see how long these socks, uh, when I made these socks, and I think I knit them either in 2010 or 2011. So they've been sitting on the needles for either 10 or 11 years, something like that. So <laughs> why rush, right? All right, there's that, that pair. Um, and this pair. I, I love these, and I'm fixing to knit another pair in a solid color of this. This is called Dewey Socks. When I bought the pattern or, or got the pattern from the designer, which I know personally, um, they were called Poseidon's Ocean Adventure and she changed the name of it to Dewey Socks. So these are mock cables. They're not, um, I'm, they are cables, but 
they're a four stitch cable and those of you who knit will know this um, so far I think they've held up pretty well yep I reinforced the heel and back here and reinforced the toe but that doesn't that's not where I really need the reinforcement yarn since I don't wear a lot of shoes that have uh, backs on them I wear a lot of clog type shoes I really don't need to use the reinforcement thread on the heel. What I need to do is do it start it like right here and go all the way down. <laughs> all right, so that's that pair. All right, so the newest pairs that I've knit are the very beginning. Um, this the very beginning socks that I showed you with my friend's pattern that own the yarn store. This is what this pattern is. It's called just simple sock pattern. And it's ribbed, all ribbed, all the way through the whole thing. It's ribbed all the way down to the toes. Where the toe starts, it's ribbed. And I, and this is more, I'm going to use these probably in December as Christmas socks because they're earth tones, reds and greens, and they just look Christmassy to me. I've not, I don't think I've worn these yet. See, and look, when you buy yarn, self-striping yarn, one sock is darker than the other. This sock is darker than that sock. There's more... Wait, where's the color? Here we go. Look at this. And then look at this. They look very different, but they're the, from the same ball of yarn. And I don't care. My last pair is this pair. And it is the Tidal Wave. The same as some of the other pairs that I've knit. But this was a self-striping yarn that you could actually see the pattern. And it makes them look like scales because of this right here. And when they're like this, they look like fish scales to me. And then there's the heel flap and the reinforced. I did not, did I? I did not reinforce the heel. I did the reinforcement yarn. Uh, I think, no. Actually, I think I pulled it out and there's no, oh, there is. It's on right here, sorry. And then I did the reinforcement on the toes. I may regret that later, but you know, we shall see how the how the yarn wears. And then there are about six or eight pairs that are on Ravelry that I made and I gave away. I don't give away a lot of socks and I don't knit socks for a lot of people because um, this knitting socks is expensive. I mean, each one of these is a minimum $20 a pair because yarn is so expensive for hand-dyed yarns or boutique yarns, that kind of stuff. It is very expensive. So whenever I give a pair of socks away, I gotta really like you, cause it cost a fortune. There's probably, I don't know, two or three hundred or more dollars worth of socks sitting right here that are all handmade. Some of them have holes in them, but they were handmade. So. This is for Shannon Green. This is my redemption video. And this is... <laughs> this is um, trying to redeem myself from that paper bowl video that I put out on Tuesday. <laughs> okay, so next time I have a sock date, uh, update, I'll let you know. I've got a pair of socks on the needles right now. And I have some yarn that I ordered um, from Amazon for my grandson to knit him a winter hat. I promised him I would do it. I had a hard time finding yarn. I went to two or three different places to look for it, um, to look for yarns and color the colors that he wanted, and I couldn't find any that, you know, were not really expensive. I don't want to knit a child's hat that cost me $25 because he's seven years old. And his dad, who is a single parent, is going to throw that thing in the washer and dryer, whether he understands about wool or not. So I had to look for fingering weight, which is basically what they call sock yarn, um, or a worsted weight, which is heavier yarn, to use for a seven-year-old's hat that I know is going to take abuse in the washer and dryer. Um, I do try to buy superwash wool, which means it doesn't shrink when you put it in the washer and dryer. I mean, it shrinks enough a little bit that you put it back on your feet and they feel like brand new, but um, I have one of those octopus hangers that you used to be able to buy at um, uh, Ikea. And so they have little clips on them and he has arms and it opens out. 
and what I do is I put these in the washing machine, but I don't put them in the dryer, and I hang them all up by the toes, which is probably one of the sturdiest parts. You don't want to hang it by this because this is expandable. You don't want to ruin the ribbing, otherwise you'll have ankle socks, and I do mean these will be down by your ankles the whole time. Um, so I hang them up by the toes on the little octopus, and I hang it over the shower rack, I mean the shower rod in the uh, bathroom, because... I want them to dry nicer and not pill, but as you can see from years of putting them in the washer and the dryer, they are pilling. Um, they make some kind of a little pillar thing that you run over it, but I ruined a pair of socks one time using that. It grabbed a hold of the little pill and it cut it off, but when it did it, it got down into the stuff and it actually pulled the yarn out and made a big oh-ho. And I was big old unhappy girl. <laughs> so that's why my, my stuff looks really pilly. And so there you go. There's my socks, and I'm still knitting more. Um, this year my goal is to try to knit 12 pairs of socks. So we'll see how it goes. I will keep you posted. I hope I am redeemed from the paper bowl project. Notice there is no matte medium involved in this at all. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, I did want to come back and add one more thing to the video. Simply, oh, it's dusty. Um, simply because it, it's important to know. You know those socks I said that I needed to darn? Well, when I knit a pair of socks, I save the yarn from the socks and put them in a little plastic baggie. And I don't always write the date on them, but I do save the yarn from them. Here are the red socks. That's the leftover yarn from those. Um, let's see, where are the cotton socks? This is one of the worst yarns I have ever knit with that I refuse to buy any more. Their, their stuff is Tofutsis. It's a... Uh, uh, some kind of bamboo yarn or something and uh, these lasted less than a year and the socks just disintegrated so here's a reminder to me in here never use this brand again for socks you can use it for other stuff just not socks um, here are the purple socks they had the red toe here's the leftover yarn from that so when I darn socks I make sure that I try to do it in this, here's the very first pair of socks. That's the last of the yarn because I've had to darn them before. And there's the reinforcement yarn I used. So I try to save the yarn that I use to make my socks with so that when um, there's an issue, I have the yarn that goes with them so that when I darn them, you won't, it, it won't show as much. It's on the bottom of my foot. Who cares, right? But still, I do save all the yarn from the, sons, the socks that I darn. I mean the socks that I make because I'm so afraid it's going to look really terrible with something else. So this is my jar of leftover sock balls. I'm not sure if other knitters do this. I don't know if they save their sock yarn. I, I, I'm not really sure. But I just thought that it would be interesting. Sometimes I even, to remind myself, oh yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. You can buy these at Bed Bath & Beyond or get them off the internet. This is a cedar um, circle, and I put it in the jars and all the containers that I have all my sock yarn in to ward off those stinking little greedy moths that eat my stuff. I don't want them to eat my yarn, so I leave it in here. And this jar has got um, a sealant around here. It's not going to deter the moths. I'm not saying that, but I try. <laughs> anyway... So there's the yard, there's the, there's the sock balls. And I do save them because, you know, I thought it would help the, the, oh, the um, general look of the socks. Yes, this jar is filthy, so I need to wipe it off. I don't use it very often. All I do is run in and dump the yarn in and leave. Okay, so this really is it. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye.